Hello everyone, this is another nuclear power plant simulator and this one falls into the category that I call the three knob simulator because you just act on three parameters to control the reaction and these we could say these are the kind of simulators for non-engineers so it's quite simple to operate, you don't really need to know much about nuclear physics. So I will just run the executable here which I already installed and I will provide you with all the links and you, you need to download this. So we are greeted with this awesome picture it seems from the mid 80s in a control room of a nuclear power plant and this is a demo version so you can go to the page clicking this button here I mean the website of this product I have many instances open and you see that you have the free version which is the one I will review here now and the full version which is 9.95 US dollar but honestly I don't see why anyone would pay for this product because it's such a th simple thing that it's not worth it. So I will go straight to the game. So we need to go through the instructions. I will click here and we, I will also full screen the thing. And you see a PWR kind of reactor in which we have pressurized water. And you see this nice that they add this diagram here. So you have the closer head which is you need to screw it to the vessel to the pressure vessel because this needs to withstand the pressure in inside the reactor which typically is around 140 bar which is uh, 14 megapascal and then this is circulating using the primary coolant pump the water in the primary which is always liquid uh, thanks to the pressure so it's not boiling so it's heated this heats because of the reaction in the core of the reactor which is controlled by the control rods here that we can insert and withdraw from the reactor and then the heat goes here to the heat exchanger where the water from the secondary circuit boils then we have a moisture separator so we have dry steam and then this steam is driven to the turbine where we will convert it into uh, mechanical work I mean we will convert the pressure of this steam into kinetical energy to spin the turbine and the turbine spins a generator that generates electricity that is injected into the grid and then in this schematic we'll just follow it because it's the way this game works but in reality it doesn't work like that primary circuits don't use any cooling tower primary uh, sorry secondary circuits don't use cooling tower this circuit needs to use very pure water because it's going through a turbine so the water cannot have impurities or salts or anything so what how this works in reality is that there is a condenser after the turbine and the condenser is just the same as the heat exchanger we see here but it's fitted with outside water which is cold this condensates the steam and you get the condensate and then the condensate is pumped back using this pump here to the heat exchanger and then in case there is a cooling tower because not all nuclear power plants have cooling towers this is to cool the water of the tertiary circuit which is open to the environment because you don't want to heat too much a river or a lake because you could change its like uh, biological and environmental values so that's why these huge hyperbolic cooling towers exist in nuclear power plants. They are not in the secondary circuit. But for the sake of this game, we will just Im imagine it works like that. I will not read this because I don't really trust this approach. So probably it's... Yeah, I just don't want to spend my, ta my time reading this. I will start the game and I will put it into normal. And... Uh, particular thing of this gameplay is that you advance days so you put your parameters so it works more or less like in a uh, these are all games when you move your figures and then you advance a time step so we will set the control position the primary coolant flow and the secondary coolant flow and then advance to the next day then see how the temperatures in the reactor heat exchanger cooling tower and the power changes and mm, depending on these changes we will make further adjustments to our control inputs the limitation of the demo version is that we have 40 days of gameplay it doesn't mean we can 
it does not mean that we can have this installed in our computer 40 days, is that we can advance this 40 times. And we will see here in the demo version, day one, when we reach 40, it will say like you need to buy the game. Okay, let's start. So if this was the classical three knob game, I will start doing final adjustments starting by the primar primary coolant. And when we have a nice flow in the primary, start uh, heating the reactor. And well, probably wait for the primary to heat the reactor by the heat of the primary pumps. And once we have all the system working and the reactor creating more heat, we could start uh, the secondary flow. But because this is a bit different gameplay, I will just set the parameters that I think are best to get up to temperature the fastest possible. So maybe I will set the reactor at 30% position and then have some flow at maybe 50 per 40%. And yeah, 40 for the secondary and go to the next day. So we see a very mild increase in temperature in the reactor. So we need more rod withdrawal. Let's go to 50% next day. And now we see movement in all the all the needles. So I will go to the next day. We are already in the, in the day three. Day four. And you see, if we leave this like that, probably we will need to decrease rod position very soon because it's increasing quite fast, the, the reactor state. This is not realistic because in reality, if you just set a rod position and you wait, in a few minutes you will blow things up, but it's the way it works. So I will reduce rod position a bit, maybe 20 or 15, yeah, and go to the next day. Okay, we are almost in the green range in the power output. That's nice. The cooling tower is a bit cold and the heat exchanger, it's, it's similar to the reactor. So I'm happy with that because if they keep parallel, I don't need to worry too much about the primary, uh, about the primary flow. So let's see. Let's see what can we do. Um, I will increase a bit secondary. This will help me in two things. One is increase the, the cooling tower temperature and power output. So next day, well, it did the contrary. So next day, uh, power output is a bit low. So I will increase secondary flow. And to avoid the cooling tower to be too cold, I will increase a bit primary because reactor is starting to get at the nice temperatures. Okay, so primary a bit more hot. Okay, and now, now things start to look nice. I will check a bit the information we get here. The power output is 1058 kilo sorry, kilowatt. So this is quite small reactor. It seems one of these small modular reactors. And we have also the value of energy produced. And we don't have any emergency or leakage or anything else. So I will just continue like this. I will, I will go to the next day. And now I see that if I continue advancing days, probably I will start to enter the yellow part of the reactor and heat exchanger. So now it's time to increase a tiny bit the primary flow and quite a lot more the secondary. So we move the heat from the left hand side to the right, right hand side to produce more power. Okay, you see the power increase quite a bit, so that's good. I will click next day. And you see reactor is almost at the yellow limit. Maybe I will let it enter the yellow limit a bit. And meanwhile increase a bit primary. Okay, next day. And you see the power now, it's very nice. It's to the highest part of the green region. Next day. And now we have the reactor and the heat exchanger both in the yellow part. So maybe it's time to reduce a bit rod position at nine. Next day. 
Heat exchanger starts to be a bit hot, so I will increase secondary flow. Next day. Next day. Now things are very stable. And you also can check the change here. So this is very useful. So it's the time derivative with one day time step. So it's not really derivative, it's incremental because we are in finite time differences. So we have a change of positive changes in both in the three uh, items, reactor, heat, exchanger and cooling, plus four, plus three, plus two. So this change of four in the reactor tells me that maybe I should decrease a bit the rod position. Let's go to six and click next day. And now we are stable almost. We have changes of one in the three items. We have a power output in green. So everything looks very nice. I will just increase a bit secondary because I have excess heat in the heat exchanger that, that I can use to produce a bit more power. Okay, let's go next day. And we are exactly at the... No, no, not yet. I will click next day. And we are at the half of the demo version because it's day 20. And we're in negative values in reactor, heat exchanger and cooling tower. So it's a pity that we don't have the change in power output because this will, would give us the full picture of the differential of our system. Because these three minus, uh, it can mean that we are taking credits from these three items to give more power output. So it doesn't really mean that the system is decreasing power overall. So I will go to the next day and check also the power output. Now it's 1480, 1462. So it's also decreasing. It means, it means maybe we have to change a bit the settings. I will increase slightly the coolant in the primary and the secondary go to 100%. Next day. Perfect. And now we see the power increase a bit and we are getting almost everything in the top of the green range, which is the optimal. Next day. Again, next day. And now it seems everything is decreasing very slightly, so I will increase road position to 7. Okay. Okay, and the primary coolant flow I will note well, yeah, I want the cooling tower to be a bit more hot, so I will increase it to 80. Next day. Nice. Next day. And we're in day 26. Next day. I want to increase a bit the power, so I need to increase the temperature in the, to in the cooling tower. I will increase primary flow to 90%. Next day. Yes, and this gave us a bit more of power. Next day. And now I'm losing a bit of temperature in the reactor. I will increase the rod position to 8. Next day. And everything is decreasing. I wonder if there is uh, fuel usage. Ah, yeah, I see fuel 74%. So probably we are losing reactivity. So we need to compensate for the fuel burn up with rod position. Let's go to 9. And next day. Yeah, everything is going down, so let's be more aggressive with the road position. I will go to 12 next day. Yeah, it seems I really need to, I need to compensate for that fuel burn up. So I will go to 15 next day. I will go to 17 next day. Perfect. We see this power increase now. Next day. Further power increase. Next day. Further power increase and now starts to get into the yellow zone, so I will decrease short position to 12. Next day, still everything increasing. Mm, we could start damaging the turbine here, but actually we are very close to the end of the demo version, so I will try to get some stable operation regime. Let's go around 9% of road position next day. Yes, and everything is nice and smooth and stable. So two days to go for the demo version. One more click. Decreasing power. So I will 
Justin Chris a bit primary coolant to 95 and next day and we produced an average of $92,000 of energy the average power output was 1,365 kilowatts so it's a quite unpowerful nuclear power plant and here we have this problem thank you for trying the nuclear power plant simulator and if you want to buy it click here and otherwise reset simulation so I will just play it again and create a meltdown for the sake of creating a meltdown or maybe go to the difficult version no okay I leave this it for you otherwise I spoil all all the things of the game so I will just create a meltdown I will set the primary at 50 secondary at 50 <clears throat> rod position at 20 next day next day 3 4 5 let's see how many days it takes to melt down at 20% rod position 15 days 16 days 17 days and we see heat exchanger overheated reactor overheated let's continue next day next day primary coolant leak emergency coolant leak reactor core damage next day emergency coolant leak meltdown so that's it at 933 degrees we got a meltdown okay that's it for this simple simulator for non-engineers i hope you enjoyed the simulation see you in the, see you in the next video bye